If you've been following this Earth Sheltered House Build project for a while, you know it's all been leading up to this burial phase. Actually, this story will be more like an onion, or, or a parfait, with layers. If you check out our website, you can get more info on our Earth Sheltered Umbrella design. The page looks at the origins, theory, and construction of one of these. Or at least, my perspective of how construction would be in theory. Here you can read about what dynamic R-value is, see how umbrella theory developed, including John Haidt's famous image from Popular Science magazine many years ago. This cross-section here shows the basic layers, concrete covered by the first layer of soil, then the umbrella, and then a layer of carpet, and finally the topsoil layer. This image illustrates how the concept is different, yet similar to regular direct insulation. The basic idea is to use the same amount of insulation, but just put a lot more thermal mass under that insulation within the envelope of the building. If I bring up my house plans, you can see the umbrella in the cross-section elevations. Of course, these architect renderings all make it look nice and smooth, but you can see a passing resemblance to what we actually built. Above all the concrete, you can see the three distinct layers. Here's a cut through the bedroom wing. This cut through the center of the house shows that the earth fill is just not enough to bother with an umbrella. But up here again on this other bedroom cross section, and you can see it again. Back to the garage, and you can see the first layer of dirt, the insulation umbrella, and the top layer of dirt. This video focuses on that first layer of dirt. Honestly, it would have been better to finish the whole house and take care of it all at once after, you know, careful waterproofing setup. But under pressure from the neighbors to cover up all the blue, we went ahead with plans to bury the two-thirds that we could. We had the guys from Roe Brothers Excavation back out again. They basically tag team it with Dick and the excavator and Marty pushing dirt into his reach with the bulldozer. By way of providing instructions on this west side, I had pointed rather vaguely around and asked them to reshape the terrain to get the dirt up over the garage to form a natural looking hill. In my mind, this would be an additive process where dirt from further away would be pushed in, and I left the details to the pros. It didn't occur to me that reshaping would also involve pushing the topsoil aside for later and other digging activities. So I didn't think to tell them about the buried power lines that ran right through that section. Oops, my bad. I called the power company and they sent a guy out rather quickly after the line was cut. I'm guessing he noticed the bulldozer and figured out what happened, but he was pretty cool about it and never sent a bill. He just fixed it quickly. We ended up marking that location with a shovel and just didn't dig down in that area anymore. Oh well, I, it actually worked out better for me because I got a better final hill shape than if we'd been careful to avoid it in the first place. While the power company guy was fixing the power lines, the crew moved around to bury the office apps on the front of the house. If you saw the last video, you know the punchline here. This pic shows uh, another view of that wall section that broke out. Oops, again. So that's two major disasters in the same hour, and it's just the morning. I was having a stressful day. The Roe brothers were nice about it though, and they talked about ways to save this wall section, but I knew it was hopeless, and just told them to let it fall and move on with the rest of it. If the retaining wall was going to fail somewhere else, then today was a good day for it. There we are putting in some horizontal carpet layers, intended to reduce lateral loads. I wanted to put more, but things were moving fast and costing hundreds per hour, so a few layers here and there is, is that's all we got. Here we are stopping and leveling for a couple reasons. Primarily we leveled so I could put in a carpet layer, but the height was also so that I could insulate the top 8 feet of that wall behind us. The guys went for lunch, like clockwork, and I got busy putting in some rigid insulation. Actually, it would have been easier if I'd had another foot or so of dirt to use to help me hold it up against the wall. Then I had to go to a meeting off site for the early afternoon, and the cameras didn't catch the carpet layers that Steve laid down for me, etc. When I got back, they were working on the east side, Here the dozer's building an earthen ramp for the excavator. Meanwhile, I was bringing in my big rocks with my skid steer. It was like a six-year-old's playset. We got a few boulders in place that day, but the day was pretty much over. The next morning we started with that boulder retaining wall. Steve. Not a Roe brother or Roe son, but dating a Roe daughter. <laughs> also had good rock puzzle instinct, and the two of us worked together pretty well to plan out a spot for each piece. The objective was to gain a lot of height quickly, and in a stable way, but the constraints were that we had a limited number of boulders. 
We started out with rock steps carefully and tightly fit to get up to the window level. Carpet was used both in horizontal layers behind the wall to reduce the lateral loads and vertically against the back of the wall to prevent any erosion from going through. We would flip the carpet forward for backfill and then flip it back again to add the next row of rocks and up, up the whole way. At some points, I also added insulation to help trap the thermal capacity behind the boulders. Once past the window sills, we had to start positioning the rocks vertically. We had chosen these ones especially carefully so they would interlock, starting with the first one tucking behind the playroom map so there's no way it could be pushed forward. They're also inclined backwards 15 degrees so they're leaning back against the dirt fill. Here's some regular speed video of this last vertical rock tucking in. I was pretty happy with how tightly everything fit, but the process was so slow I stopped filming. We'll add a few more feet of horizontal boulders in the next burial phase and then grout everything together. Um, also add rebar pegs and stuff like that to hold it all together. For now, on to the roof of the bedrooms. Oops, Dick's excavator ran out of gas. I chuckled a little because he had just warned me not to let that happen with my skid steer the day before. Priming a diesel fuel system is a hassle. It was okay though, I needed a short break. When they got started again, I asked Dick to dump some dirt down the bedroom skylights. This will save me a ton of earth moving when it's time to raise that dirt floor level up to within 6 inches of the final floor height. We also used a lot of this pile of nice sand for making stucco later on. The dirt for the bedrooms came from the area northeast of the house. The strategy was that Marty's bulldozer would push it up the hill to within the excavator's reach who would then position it on the roof. That lump he's ignoring at the bottom of the hill is the topsoil that he's saving for later. Then the excavator moved around to work from the south side. On the north side, the bulldozer pushed away that platform that it had made for the excavator, and it shaped the hill. Keep in mind that this is just the first layer. This is the part that will be under the umbrella. There's still more dirt to come. The traction on that bulldozer is amazing. Then back again to the garage to finish up on that side. This last bit is the dozer clearing away that excavator ramp on the west side of the garage. So now the first layer is done and we need to lay out the insulation umbrella before we add the next layer. That'll be the next video, 
No idea when I'll have time to put it together, but subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to follow along. If you want to skip ahead to catch up with where we are now, check us out on Facebook. For more detailed info, check out the webpage at homelyearth.com.